I began my education at Parsons School of Design, where I studied communications design. And then I moved on to computer science. I studied computer science, and I went to work at Bell Labs. And I was a member of the technical staff there in the Advanced Communication Technologies Department, where we were responsible for new service concepts innovations. And during my years at Bell Labs, I earned 14 U.S. patents. One of the final projects that I worked on, we were responsible for detecting vital signs, heart rate and respiration, using Doppler radar that was generated by wireless devices, such as Waveland cards or the telephone, the cell phone. That's how I met people at Bell Labs who also knew people here at NJIT. And when I met the folks at NJIT, I decided this was the place for me. As a graduate student at NJIT, I decided to major in biomedical engineering. I'm particularly interested in applying technology to the vision of the future. The reason why I chose this area, including virtual reality, is because the technology has become rapidly available and it's expanding. It's so compelling. People are very interested in computer science and various applications on the computer. We can help people to recover from various motor injuries by understanding how interacting in this virtual environment uh, actually affects the brain. For the hand exercises in virtual reality, I chose American Sign Language because there's already a taxonomy and there are 17 distinctive hand shapes associated with American Sign Language. I also chose it because I thought a particular part of the brain, Broca's area, was very interesting for rehabilitation of the hand. Not only is Broca's area associated with language, but it's also associated with planning, moving your hand. So I was hoping that these exercises where people learn about American Sign Language can actually activate parts of the brain that are important for moving your hands. What you might notice with these virtual hands is that I'm only moving my right hand and yet you can see both hands moving. Since we're very interested in connecting behavior with the underlying brain science, we studied in the magnet when people move one hand and they see the other hand move, we're actually able to recruit additional parts of the brain associated with the part of the body that's not even moving. So a person moves their right hand, they see their left hand moving, and that image of the left hand actually activates part of the brain associated with moving the left hand. When people have a stroke or brain injury, occasionally they have paralysis on one side. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to take advantage of mirror neurons or this action observation network in people's brain. And we'd like to stimulate parts of the brain to become active again and to try to retrain the paralyzed hands so that it can move.